Moving on, on the hot seat today, we put the spotlight on residential solar company, Solar Square. The venture recently raised 100 crore rupees in its Series A funding round led by Elevation Capital and Chris Saka's multi-billion dollar climate tech fund, Lower Carbon. Now, the round also saw participation from existing investors, Good Capital, Rain Mata, and angels like Vidit Atre and Sanjeev Banwal of Misho. The venture claims in the last two years, Solar Square has solarized close to 5,000 homes, helping owners save on average 40,000 rupees per year in electricity bills. And to talk to us about the road ahead, joining me now is its co-founder, Shreya Mishra. Shreya, welcome to Startup Street. Now, Solar Square was bootstrapped till 2020 as a commercial rooftop solar solutions provider. And in 2020, when you joined in as the co-founder, the company decided to foray and eventually pivot into the consumer residential solar segment. First, what made you pivot? And then also, if you could talk to us about your current offerings, what is your USP? How are you providing hassle-free rooftop solar? Sure. Uh, thanks a lot, Shruti, firstly, for having me here. I'm an avid viewer of uh, CNBC Startup Street, Street like every entrepreneur on the block. So thanks for having me here. And uh, uh, coming to uh, Solar Square's history, so while we have just raised our Series A of 100 crores, uh, Solar Square was actually a bootstrapped, profitable company all the way from 2015 till 2020, uh, founded by Neera Jain and Nikhil Nahar. Uh, the company started out as a B2B solar company because that's where solar adoption was happening in the market. Uh, in 2020, we, you know, it's been just about two years uh, since we started our foray into residential solar, and uh, it was a big decision to, you know, pivot from being a profitable bootstrapped company. But I think it was a pivot that came from a point of uh, seeing a massive opportunity and seeing a white, a clear white space. Uh, we felt that there was no professional company operating in the residential market, taking care of consumers and homes and helping them switch to solar. And we felt that we could be that, that company. Hmm. Uh, to put some numbers into perspective, uh, Shruti, in this decade, more than $50 billion worth of rooftop solar will be purchased by homeowners in India. Okay. And the important thing to note is that all of them are going to be first time buyers. Hmm. And a typical Indian family is spending one and a half to two lakh rupees in buying solar from us. It's a little above a two wheeler uh, and it's a little below uh, an entry level car. Hmm. So hmm. imagine the kind of trust that Bharat will need when switching to solar. And that's where Solar Square comes in. Okay. Uh, um, Bharat trusts Bajaj for their first two-wheeler purchase. Huh? Bharat trusts Maruti for their first car purchase. And uh, we hope that Bharat will trust Solar Square for its first okay. uh, roof purchase. And that's what is our USP, Shruti, uh, okay. really. Industry, uh, interesting numbers you gave there. And, you know, Shreya, uh, like you said, Solar Square designs, installs, and, you know, finances rooftop solar systems for homes and, in addition, also provides rooftop solar solutions for housing societies and commercial establishments as well. Like you said, it's been two years, but what is the kind of traction you've seen so far? If you could take me to the business growth numbers. Absolutely. So we started from zero uh, just, you know, 24, 25 months back. Today we are run rating about 100 crore, uh, Shruti. And we've done that by, you know, just about, uh, you know, a few months back, we had announced a $4 million seed round. Uh, so it's not that we've grown with a lot of capital. Uh, at Solar Square, we believe in building for the long run and, you know, building uh, frugally, but building, you know, uh, with the right, uh, you know, customer service okay. and the right trust for the customers. Hmm. And that's really, Shruti, what we have focused on. In these last two years, we've been very close to the ground. Uh, we've only and only heard our customers and understood every sing single pain point hmm. uh, that a typical family would, you know, have. Imagine the kind of questions a homeowner would have when he's going to spend one and a half to two lakh rupees in installing sure. a roof system. And so we are a full stack residential solar brand. Uh, in these two years, we've built technology capabilities. We've built, uh, you know, uh, we are the first company to actually introduce modular prefabricated solar installation designs in India. So compared to a three to five day installation time, hmm. a solar square solar system is, uh, you know, is installed in eight hours. Okay. So now All right. my crew would go to the customer's sure. home and 5 p.m. they'll be out.
All right, all right. Uh, let's now talk about the 100 crore rupee fundraise that you've raised. Like you mentioned in June this year, you also raised 30 crore rupees. If you could take me through the fund allocation plans, the kind of expansion you're eyeing. And I believe, like you also mentioned, you're looking at product innovations in installation designs, launching in-house NBFC to give five-minute instant loan approvals to residential solar buyers. If you could elaborate on these plans as well and, you know, when you plan to roll out. Absolutely. So there are literally two things, you know, that we believe will make uh, adoption of solar really easy for Indians. The first is, uh, you know, offering a great customer experience, a professional service that installs high quality systems in a timely manner. And the second is basically easy financing. Uh, because not a lot of families are willing to, in, you know, invest one and a half to two lakh rupees on, up front. While solar is a fantastic investment, it gives you more than four times return than putting the same money in a fixed deposit. So it's absolute no-brainer. It's cheaper, it's cleaner, it pays for itself. But arranging that upfront capital sometimes is a bottleneck for many consumers. And hence, one of the, uh, you know, big allocation of this 100 crore Series A that we have raised will be in, in fact, launching our own NBFC. Uh, we believe that financing is very core to our product. And we are not just going to be a solar company, we are going to be a solar plus financing okay. company. And All right. uh, we'll one, help. Sure, yeah. one, one final question. You know, as India aims to achieve its rising energy needs and also deliver on aggressive emission targets, solar generation offers tremendous potential. And we also have the COP27 summit. The fight against climate change has now become a global mission. How do you view the climate tech or clean tech space and the potential uh, that you see for yourself in the future? Uh, that's a great question, uh, Shruti. And I think uh, this is the war of our generation, right? Climate mm. change is the war that our generation has to fight. Uh, we are the first generation to feel the effects of it so closely. Uh, we are seeing the floods in Pakistan. We are seeing wildfires in Australia, Texas, California. Uh, it's at our doorstep, and we are the only generation that can do something about it. And I think technology and startups are going to play a very, very crucial role. I mean, funds like Lower Carbon have become multi-billion dollar funds. That's the kind of interest the world has in investing sure. in climate tech companies. Uh, and I think uh, technology and startups are going to lead this fight. Absolutely. Um, uh, and alongside governments, uh, you okay. know. Uh, all right, Shreya, we've completely run out of time, but wish you the very best in all your growth plans and many thanks for joining us on Startup Street today. Thank you so much, Ruthie. On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break, but coming up next, Zoom Car, one of the largest car-sharing marketplaces across emerging markets, prepares for its NASDAQ debut, takes the SPAC route to list a special conversation with Greg Moran, co-founder and CEO of Zoom Car, on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Zoomka, one of the largest car sharing marketplaces across emerging markets like India, Indonesia, Vietnam and Egypt, has announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement to merge with the Innovative International Acquisition Corporation. Under this, Zoomka will be listed on the Nasdaq with its name changed to Zoomka Holdings. The official merger is set to be finalized by the second quarter of 2023. And joining us now to discuss this further is Greg Moran, the co-founder and CEO of Zoomka, and my colleague Shruti. Greg, uh, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. You know, first question to you, can you take us through the details of this merger and the rationale to take uh, the SPAC route to list on the NASDAQ? Was listing in India not an option? Sure. So thanks so much for having me here today. Uh, so to address that directly, so as, as we think about the, the brand and the, the company, the platform, so we are uh, a Delaware registered C-Corp uh, to start. So Zoom Car Inc. is the, the parent company. Uh, so the, the overwhelming majority of our funds, both venture capital and private equity, has, has come into that entity. And so we've always kind of looked at this as a, as a broader sort of macro play uh, across 20, 25, 30 plus countries. So India being the, the starting point. But as we think about positioning for the company over the next three, four, five years, uh, we very much uh, expect to be in, in that many markets. And I think just naturally being on a more global exchange like NASDAQ is going to be a little bit more fitting for the overall overarching okay. longer term aspirations. All right, Greg, Shruti, the side, uh, you know, when can we expect you to be listed on NASDAQ? If you could take us through the timelines, do you believe this is the right time considering the current volatile market conditions? Sure. So I think, of course, as, as you probably are aware, it's, it's really challenging to kind of go out there and 
exactly time uh, something in, in a perfect manner. I, I think uh, if you look at where we believe this will land, uh, we, we have indicated uh, sort of formally there that Q2 of, of next year, uh, sort of that April quarter, is, is the, the time frame that we're envisaging. Uh, but I, I think as, as we think about where the, the general markets are and relative to where we are as a, as a company, I think we've made tremendous strides both in, in terms of uh, overall growth as, as well as uh, efficiency uh, on that uh, broader journey to, to be well-placed uh, for next year once we're out in the public markets. All right, so that's next year. Uh, Greg, also let's talk about Zoomcar and its performance so far. You've made a pivot to an asset light model during the pandemic. If you could take us to the kind of growth you've seen so far, what's the path to profitability looking like? Sure. So to set the context a bit there, so we, we actually had started to make that transition to a, a full-fledged marketplace back in 2018. Uh, and so that was uh, slightly interrupted by the, the onset of the pandemic. But as, as soon as that second wave opened up early last year, we, we've seen really uninterrupted growth as we've transitioned fully to a 100% asset light marketplace platform. And, and so we've seen uh, actually a, a growth to the point where we're well over 25,000 registered vehicles on the platform, uh, the majority of which are in India. And at the same time, we, we've seen over a 6x plus jump in our overall top line uh, achievement as, as we've gone through that in, in terms of the gross booking value around the same. And, and so that, I think, really belies the, the broader point that we've seen incredible adoption and uptick. And we currently have a presence across over 50 cities in India, and we're in three other countries outside. So we expect that growth and that trajectory to, to continue as we go ahead. So you expect that growth trajectory to continue. You've uh, Let's talk about the business. You've also seen your average ticket sizes go up by over 50% from pre, the pre-COVID phase. What led to this jump in your ticket size and how much money are you making per ride? Sure, I think just to speak to the first point, I, I think what's really fascinating for us uh, coming out of the pandemic, we, we've seen uh, really a, a plethora of new use cases emerge. And I think one of the key factors here has been just a, a huge push towards that multi-day use case. So two, three, four day type trips where people are going out of the city and that domestic tourism, there's been a huge tailwind, particularly in India around this. And I think what we've seen is a lot of the, uh, the bookings that were earlier kind of for a half day or full day have, have migrated into much larger meteor ticket sizes. And I think that really, that overall use case behavior has been what has, has driven that uh, call out in that point. And I think to the, to the second part of that, so I, I think along with that transition, uh, in the, the ticket size, I think that's really what is building a lot more efficiency at a unit level. And that's what's allowing us to, to actually earn, uh, you know, a, a, at this point, a, a modest amount uh, at, at a booking level. But I think ultimately that's what's going to allow us to reach uh, more more steady state uh, EBITDA numbers as we continue to scale. All right, let's also talk about your expansion plan. Like you said, you're already in 50 cities in India and other emerging markets. So what's the expansion plan there? And take us through how much uh, focus will remain on the India market. Sure. So as you called out rightly, we, we are in about 50 markets here, cities in India. Uh, we, we definitely believe that what we have on offer is, is very much applicable for several hundred cities. Uh, but I think at the same time, it's, it's really those top 10 cities that are going to constitute uh, a very significant majority of our overall growth. So the tier one cities and, and a couple of the big tourist destinations like Goa, et cetera, would, would probably form the, the lion's share uh, of what we think we'll achieve. Uh, and I think that's just natural given the sort of hyper-local network effects and the density that you can build in uh, to create that sort of marketplace flywheel dynamic. Uh, so that's how we think about India evolving while we'll add long tail cities. Uh, sure. it's, it's going to be the top 10 that drive the lion's share of it. And, and then at the same time, so India will, will remain a majority of our overall volume okay. globally, but certainly uh, Indonesia, uh, Egypt, Vietnam will, will feature much more prominently. I think Indonesia will probably end up being uh, a number two or number three country for us. Uh, we certainly see an enormous right. opportunity. Greg, a yeah. quick question. If you could take us to the kind of revenues you're clocking currently, where will you end this year? And what's the revenue mix been like for you? So in, in terms of the, the, the revenue mix, uh, we have uh, typically seen uh, really almost all of that revenue. So 95% plus of that uh, has, has come out of, out of India. Uh, and, and so we believe that the, the Southeast Asian markets and the, the Egypt market will start to form a larger percent share of that. So we, we do believe that uh, India as a, as a relative percent uh, will will actually go down. But then, of course, the, the aggregate volumes will continue to rise 
uh, dramatically. So if if you look at kind of where uh, we we reached, as as I mentioned, we we got into six uh, x plus growth uh, to the point where we're uh, run rating close to fifty million dollars of, of of top line uh, for for the India business. Uh, you know, and and I think that's ultimately something which we believe uh, will be able to to grow at a, at a meaningful clip here going ahead. All right, Greg, uh, we're completely out of time, but thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Sure. Thanks. Thanks so much, guys. All right. In news just in, India's largest winemaker, Sula Vineyards, has received SEBI nod for its IPO. The company had filed their DHRP <coughs> with the market regulator back in July this year. The public offering will be entirely in offer for sale, under which shareholders like promoters, investors and others will participate. Kotak Mahindra Capital, CLSA and IIFL Capital are the investment banks working on this issue. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates continue on the other side. Stay tuned.